Locks are pretty cool, especially the old ones. They're like little tiny mechanical puzzles you need just the right key to solve. We've all seen the movies and TV shows where there's a really old house in the drawer full of skeleton keys and you have to take them and explore around to see which old locks or secret passageways they'll open up. Or a pirate treasure chest buried on some remote beach and you need the perfect skeleton skeleton key to get into it. I've always thought that was super cool and so in honor of that today we'll be making our own skeleton lock and key. So I started off this process by creating a rough sketch of what I wanted to make. Perfect! Now off to the CAD software, where I'll turn this rough sketch into a more exact model. After a good long while of designing, redesigning, and improving where needed, it's finally off to the 3D printer where we can begin to print these parts. And after all that said and done, we are finally left with these. But before we can get started putting all this together, we're going to need a few non-3D printed parts. Namely, two compression springs and one one-inch binding post. <laughs> that's like an off-brand serial name. I don't know if that's what that's actually called. Now, although all these parts printed really well, we want them to be absolutely perfect. So I'm going to take some 1200 grit sandpaper and just sand down all of the little tiny moving parts. And with that, we can begin to assemble our lock. First, I'm going to take one of our bolts and slide the spring into the back of it. Then slide both of those into one of the halves of our main housing and repeat the process for the other side. Now these bolts are two of the moving pieces we sanded down, but to go even a step further, I'm going to give them a healthy coat of white lithium grease because we really want as little friction in here as possible. After that, we can drop our internal lock housing into place and then push our spacers into that, making sure we give them some love from the grease as well. Once everything's in place and we're happy with how well it's greased, we can go ahead and snap both halves together. Looks like it's lining up really well, so I'm going to go ahead and open it back up just a touch so I can super glue it together. Just be super careful not to glue any of the internal moving parts because the grease cannot help against that. Once the glue has had time to set, I'm going to go ahead and drop in these tiny screws and tighten them down. Between the screws and the glue, we should have a pretty solid seal that's not easily broken. Now on to the loop. I'm going to go ahead and insert the hinge pin to help line it all up. Then we'll just super glue and clamp it together. And once that's dry, we can go ahead and use our hinge pin to put the lock and loop together. I printed these little plastic gumdrops to help cover up the screws. So all we're going to do is drop some glue in the holes and then push in the gumdrops. Everything's looking pretty decent, but look at that hinge pin. It's sticking out like two and a half mil too much. So let's go ahead and cut that down. Perfect. And actually, while we have this in two pieces, let's not put it back together just yet. Instead, let's glue the two halves of the key together like we did the loop. Can I do that? Now that we have the main lock, loop, and key all assembled and ready to go, let's go ahead and give them a cool paint job to make them look more realistic. I'm using Krylon's hammered copper and hammered matte cast iron spray paints for this, and I'm really liking it. Once the spray paint has had a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and lightly sand everything down to add some aging and weathering to it so it looks more realistic, but also to ensure it operates as smoothly as possible. Thank you. 
Once we're done and we're happy with how it turned out, we can slide our hinge pin back in place, putting it back together, and our lock is complete. And so how this lock works, if you haven't already pieced it together, is super simple. And first, we have the two halves of the housing and the loop. And then we have the two bolts, one on each half. And when you put the two halves together, the two bolts match up perfectly, one right beside the other. As a result of that, both bolts lock down on one half of the loop. And so both bolts have to be depressed to unlock the loop. Next, we have the internal frame lock and these series of spacers. First, we have this little bottom spacer. And as you can see, it has these little tiny wings on the side of it that lock it into place with the frame so it can't move. And next, we have this spacer. And as you can see, it doesn't have wings on the side so it can move. But it does have this little fin on the top that can push against the bolt. Next, we have another spacer that does lock in place. You can tell this is the middle one because I designed a little hole in the top of it. Another spacer that pushes against the bolt, only this one pushes against the second bolt on the other half. And lastly, another spacer that locks in place. And so to unlock the lock, we're going to have to rotate the two separate spacers that push against the bolts. But in order to do that, we can't touch any of the other spacers because remember, they're locked in place, they won't move. And so for example, if we were to take a flathead screwdriver and try to rotate it, it won't go anywhere. We have to use the key because its teeth are the perfect distance to line up or not line up with everything. And that's the cool part about this whole thing is it's super customizable. If everyone were to print this lock but change the design of the teeth of the keys or the spacers or even just the thickness of the spacers, they would all be completely different locks and no other key could open up your lock. As you see, the lock is a very simple design, but without being able to look inside it to see how it operates, it'd be a lot more difficult for a stranger to be able to pick it than it may originally seem. I showed it to my friends and each and every one of them was like, well, I can pick that. They couldn't. I am of course not trying to suggest this is the world's greatest lock. It's not, but the average Joe off the street would get at least a little tripped up by it. <laughs> oh, come on, no, oh. <laughs> Oh, come on, baby. Oh, come on. Oh, oh man. Oh, they really got that thing on there. Oh, Billy, they put a lock on it. We're going to have to pick it if we want to get in. Oh, just my luck. I hate being an average Joe off the street. Oh. If you guys do end up making your own, be sure to send me a picture of it on Instagram. I'd love to see them and I might just end up posting it on my story. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, and if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. But if you didn't, please feel free to lock yourself in the dungeon and dissolve the key in acid. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching, and Lord willing, I'll see you on the flippity flop. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe.